Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Hourling Podcast Project. I'm Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. Tonight, though, our leader is going to be Shay. Shay's going to take it over from here. Shay, take her away. All right. Hey, guys. So, yeah. So, welcome to our do's and don'ts of feedback episode. Um, one of the most frequent questions that I get from aspiring writers is how do you handle feedback? Because feedback can be really scary. Um, you know, you're putting your work out there on the line and people are going to criticize it and tell you to change it or tell you something's not working. And it sounds really intimidating. And to be honest, you know, it is a little intimidating the first time. Um, but as you keep writing and keep seeking feedback, you'll get better and better at uh, responding to it and implementing it to improve your story. So we have uh, three don'ts and three do's for feedback giving and receiving. Uh, we're going to see what, uh, what my colleagues here think about my list. So, yeah, um, before we even get started. All right, go for it. One of the, the best reasons to join a writer's group is to get used to feedback. Yeah. Because you think other writers in your writer's group are going to be tough on you? <laughs> Wait till actual people start reviewing your stuff yes. on Amazon. Yes. Okay. Or if you're so going to go the traditional it is, route, it's a it's a good way to help yeah. develop good habits that will serve you well for a long time. Which includes mm -hmm. having thick skin, because after you're published, like Mari said, it's not when the feedback stops. Mm -hmm. um, the, the worst feedback will come when you can't change it, when you've already published it. Um, and that's very hard, too. So you definitely want to try to receive that uh, feedback early so you can okay. uh, you can make changes and fix it. You're the only one with that problem. You're traditionally oh. <laughs> Us I tell you what. Change yeah, you know. You too. New version. That's true. You know, you, know, yeah, you know, actually, uh, the feedback from my very first novel, um, I got a lot of feedback about typos and, you know, mm. stuff like that, that I quietly fixed and released a, uh, a second edition. And uh, after, you know, only a few hundred sales. So uh, that's, that's one great thing about being indie published, you can very quietly update the book so that if it, an egregious error is detected, you can actually get it out there. Then those books become a collector's item. Yeah, there you go. Although this does remind you to remember to hire an editor. Do not go cheap on your editor. Yeah, so even when you hire editors, typos always Oh, they do. Through. No editors per Still, but yeah. a typo on the back cover, that's not cool. So. Not cool. My novel, before it was published by Macmillan, was edited three times by me, once by my agent, once by my content editor, once by my copy editor, and then read one more time by me, and a typo still made it through. Yeah. And I, you know, a week after it was published, one of my friends messaged me and told me about the typo, and we almost, I almost lost a friend that day. I was so angry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know... You went with it. So yeah. anyway, but it's more than typos. Feedback, I think, you know, really good feedback should really not just be, hey, you have a typo here. Um, and actually, good feedback um, is going to tell you how to improve your story, your character, your themes. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Well, no, I was going to say, since we brought typos, uh, that's a good starting topic. Do not correct typos in the meeting. That is not what people are there. You can Put the typos on the paper and give the paper yeah, or email paper. the typos. But we're there for the structural well, things. Well, let's that, take a look uh, at my list, Jeffrey. And maybe maybe you'll yeah. stand by that and maybe you'll reconsider it as you go through your list because <laughs> I, think that, I think there's some loopholes there. So my, so my yeah, first, there are loopholes. But. My first don't um, for when you are receiving feedback, don't argue. It, right. is not, it is not helpful to argue, but that doesn't mean that you're wrong. That doesn't mean that they're right by not arguing. It just means mm -hmm. it's not helpful. It's not the time for it. Um, no, I like good. to abide by the smile and nod policy. Mm -hmm. But even if someone's saying something and you just think it's the worst feedback in the world and complete garbage, mm -hmm. smile mm -hmm. and nod. Um, and also then, characterize you know, it as go ahead. Um, asking people for their opinion. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're giving it to you. Mm -hmm. Right. They didn't have to do it. They didn't have to spend the effort to look at your. Yeah. Your, your, right. And you solicited it. Right. Mm -hmm. And they own their opinion. Right. Uh, yeah. For instance, your story might not be quite in their wheelhouse. Yeah. They mm -hmm. may not respond to certain aspects of your story. Yeah. Um, I had so, one story of mine where where a, a guy in the writing group said, 
you know, I can tell that your story is really well written, but I can't get into it because your character, your point of view character is a 10 year old girl and I just can't identify with her. Mm. So David, what is your go-to response like then? Either, you know, physically on your expression or even just like response verbally when um, someone gives feedback to you that you just well, totally I'm, I'm think is off base. I'm an IT consultant in my day job. So I pretty much have the, this face. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but like right, I, said, I don't get angry. You usually just say thank you. Yeah. Or, or write yep. something down. People own their opinion. Thank you very much. It's the perfect response to feedback yeah. that you totally disagree with. Now, right. um, I might ask another question. I might say, Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the plot twist didn't work for you. Um, in what yeah. way did it not work for you? Right, right. The clarification. Right. I'm, not arguing clarification. I'm, I'm asking them to clarify in what way it didn't work for them. Because and another a, thing, have opinion. There's a there's where there's smoke, there could be fire. Right. And another thing that I I, I seem to recall our critique that I did for you, David, and you were quite right to say that. Look, I see where you're going with this. My story is not going to go there. Let's just move on. And that that is perfect, perfectly valid because uh, you you are looking for a critique. And if I'm not helping you, let me know. Well, and there's probably two different aspects of that. One is when somebody tells you that the story isn't working for them, like I said, that's their opinion and, and they own that. And for them, it could very mm -hmm. well be true. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is uh, when, they, when they give you a prescription for how to fix the problem, it may not be something you want to do. Uh, right. Yeah, one good thing that helps refine the feedback that you do get is finding the right writer's group. Mm -hmm. um, before I had found um, the writer's group, the Hourlings, I had tried several others. And since I, <laughs> since I um, moved out of Northern Virginia, I've been trying to find other writer's groups. And having a genre-specific writer's group, then you avoid feedback like, oh, this is science fiction. I just don't get it. Right. I just right. don't right. get it. And even and, this, yeah. this group, so, even this group, we will get people. You don't want to impose that kind of stuff on somebody either. I'm not, I'm not going to make somebody read my stuff and, yeah. uh, right. and right. no, I, I, give I, me I a, an opinion that I won't agree with because, right. you know. I mean, it's fine for you just not to give any feedback. That's another thing. That if you, this is not your piece and you have nothing constructive to say, just say, no, let's go, okay, and then just move on to the next person. Or if it's a free form, just don't raise your, raise your hand to speak. That's also quite valid. So the conclusions of this don't, with don't argue, is that A, it's not helpful. It's just not mm -hmm. helpful to what you're there to do. And B, right. um, it doesn't make you look very professional. And right. if we do, we still want to continue um, fostering our professional identity as, as writers. And, so and one, other thing, one other thing is, you're there, you have a limited amount of time. Do you really want to spend that time right. arguing a point or move on to the next point? Sure, yeah, exactly. All well, right, so next, we have it. I'm sorry, David, go ahead. Also, if you argue with somebody, it's really not conducive to getting more feedback in the future. Yeah. Uh, maybe right. you find their feedback valuable in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, why, why piss somebody off when you- Yeah, I, I've stopped giving feedback <laughs> to some people because of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, you know, whatever. It's, it's their, their vote. All right. So uh, that was our don't. We're moving on to a do. Mm -hmm. When you are seeking feedback, do be specific about the kind of feedback you're looking for. Um, you can be looking for descriptive feedback where the readers will tell you simply how they felt, their impressions on something, whether it worked for them, but they won't tell you how to, how to change it or how to fix it if they think it didn't work. Prescriptive okay. feedback, on the other hand, will do that. It'll say, this didn't work for me, but I think you should do this and change that. And I think that would be a good solution. That's prescriptive mm -hmm. feedback. Some people get pissed off and say, oh, don't tell me how to write my book. Other people like mm -hmm. me get frustrated when you don't give me prescriptive feedback because I feel like it's just you being emotional or, you know, right. <laughs> I know you're not, but that's, that's kind of my, my, uh, my own bias. Right. Um, or maybe you're just looking for a specific question, like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm really just looking, I'm not looking for anything else, but for you to tell me if the voice really sounded like it was a 12 year old. Right. Know, like she was 12. Wait. That's all I'm looking for. And then Marty you get Hines? feedback that is just what you're looking for. So be specific, otherwise you'll frustrate yourself and you'll waste the time of the others trying to help you. Yeah, what do you guys Marty think? And I, you know, I was gonna say, Marty and I recently posted to the Hourlings 
Marty, you were asking for the, the, the voice. Did it work uh, to change a voice? I'll let you talk to that. But I, I did one and I said, look, I switched the character in the middle. Do you think this works? Uh, and, um, you know, sometimes you just want to get suggestions on if it doesn't work, let me know. I'm not saying for you, Marty, but for me, I don't know. Give me some right. ideas if it doesn't Thanks work. Thanks for reminding me of that example, that specific example. I had a scene where I was intentionally violating one of my own personal rules. Mm -hmm. I head hopped between two people. And I was trying to be really subtle about that to convey something. And um, it was really nice to be able to uh, ask for people to look at that specifically because in, in fact, during the session, a lot of people said, had you not told me head hopping happened in this scene, I wouldn't yeah. even noticed it, yeah. which is exactly what I wanted. So it worked very well. It worked very well. And people told me that the way I switched uh, perspectives in another scene, they said, yeah, don't mind. The only problem was they said, well, they told me many problems. I'm not going to discuss those. But, uh, you know, they said, just do it consistently. And that's that was the best advice I got. And um, me, the, the type of feedback I'm usually looking for is uh, I'm looking for, uh, well, I'm reasonably good at plotting. So I, what I'm really looking for is, is the story working? Is the character working? Is the emotional reveal um, working? Mm -hmm. um, and if, if not, I kind of want to know why it's not working. Uh, and this is also one of, one of my problems as a writer is in the first draft, I never quite hit the emotional highs and lows that I want. So I'm always open to ideas on how to increase the impact. How do I make the character more devastated? How do I make the, the, the tragedy deeper? How do, I, how do I take that knife and stab it in your heart uh, and make you feel what the character is feeling? So I'm always open to, to, to those things. Now I imagine you and I kind of have, kind of have a flipped uh, first drafts there, David, because I think that my first drafts usually do hit the emotional highs and lows but they always have plot holes and, and need a lot of tightening mm. when it comes to making logical sense. And you as a planner, I think probably have a tighter, uh, you know, plot logistical first draft than I end up with. So it's interesting how that works out with, mm. uh, do, you, also, do you agree? Yes, I, I do. Uh, I also do some things to combat that because I, I don't want my, my story to be too structurally bound. So right. I, I will tend to uh, plot the story and pants the scenes. Yeah, um, right, right. a whole other discussion. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Right. which I do think we've done one. If you haven't, you will do it in the future. Sure. Um, so right. one other so, thing is question, well, questions. You know, when I'm looking, when I'm oh, looking sorry, for, Shay. No, when I'm looking for feedback, um, yeah. I usually tend to, and I, I think I'm pretty good about announcing what I'm really looking for when it comes mm -hmm. to bringing it to the writing group. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty good about that. Um, but I, I do tend to, with my first chapters, um, not ask for anything specific because I don't want to preface it with uh, you know information that a reader coming in fresh would yeah. not have. If I were to say, hey, you know, please look out for this and tell me if this part worked. No, I just want you to read the first chapter plot and see you know what you think of it. But everything else, usually after that point, I'll have a couple of things I'm really looking for. Uh, well, some would disagree with that because most readers don't start your story cold. They've at right. least seen the cover and read a blurb. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, exactly. that's a good point. Exactly. So three that you have to control how much information you give them. But yeah. I don't think you have to make it zero because I don't think that's natural in the real world. That's fair. Right. That's a fair point. I take it. I take it. Yeah, I See, I smiled and nodded. See, you guys, I smiled and nodded. I was there criticized. You go. But uh, this time, yeah. I really do think it was a fair point. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll be plotting revenge later. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, you guys. I'm sorry for stepping on you, Shay, because there's one other point I wanted to make. Sure. Question. All right, go ahead. Uh, my, I, as some of our viewers know, I run a group on Monday and I grew, work, run a group on Saturday. And our sa the Saturday group that I run, many of the authors prefer to put questions at the end of the section that they've submitted to say, did I hit this? Do you think I did that? Do you, know, do you think this is believable? Questions about the piece that we've just read. Now, that, uh, you know, take early because you may be priming the reader. That's why you put them at the end, though you may be priming the reader to look for things that they may miss other things. But on the other hand, if you're really literally le legitimately looking for that feedback, asking that question beforehand, before they come to the meeting so that they can see what, what topics are going to be discussed can actually be quite uh, helpful. Yeah. Mm. That's Good not point. a bad idea. I, I tend to save that for the beta read. Mm. Um, mm. Where, 
yeah. I, whenever I do a beta read, uh, the people get to read the whole story, um, but the beta read is accompanied by a questionnaire that I want them to fill out. Right. Yeah, beta reads a whole different kind of feedback. Mm -hmm. We can do a whole episode on that. We'll do an episode. We should. We'll do it. We we'll do definitely it. should do it. Yeah, Marty read. makes a note. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. All right. So yeah. now we're moving to a don't. We had one don't and one do. We're back to don'ts. When you are giving feedback, don't use feedback giving as a way to show everyone else in the room how smart you are which means you are just up on that pedestal and you're pulling out, you're dropping the names that you read up on, you're pulling out the, uh, you know, all the lessons that you mastered um, and you're trying to make everyone see how smart you are and talking a lot, um, you know, something that I am guilty of right now. So you, you want to make sure that you are focusing on the author and not on yourself. And I'm going to leave it at that and see what you guys think about that don't. It is, it is a good point, although I would put a little asterisk on it. If you are the reviewer who is a shmi in the category, the sub subject matter expert, it, and the person that is looked, that is written that may recognize you as the subject matter expert. They may value expertise. But if you're not the subject matter expert, I like if you're going to the meeting and I'm more or less the physics subject, ma subject matter expert. So if someone else goes and does bullivating on physics, I may just roll my eyes if they don't really know what they're talking about. And don't, if you don't think you're an expert on it. That would be my advice there. So this is my real library behind me. And this is mm -hmm. only oh, yeah. you can see in the picture. Um, if it's science fiction, I'm a SME. Yes. For practically my entire life. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to tell you how smart I am, but if you've written a science fiction story, I can probably give you a reference to either a movie or a book where somebody has done something similar where you might be able to learn um, something useful from it. Absolutely. Uh, um, David, you've I been will a great always share those and, and people are just going to have to live with it. Yeah, no, you've been a great resource, resource in that respect, David. And that brings up a, a good point. Um, the people that you are getting feedback from, it's important to know them to some extent. Mm -hmm to know, oh, does this guy know what he's talking about when he's talking about horses or sailing or mm -hmm. you know, any other issue that is uh, complicated? Because um, we've got um, a gun expert. We've got the gun spray right, right so here. So sometimes, sometimes, you know, sometimes people are experts. And, uh, but the, the point that I think you're really trying to make is just don't be an asshole. Right. Exactly. It is really, it is. Because you could, you know, not know anything about what you're giving feedback about. And if you're, you know, just trying to grandstand because there's a, a cute girl in the writer's group that you're trying to impress, don't do that. Just don't do that. Right. Because she's not interested, trust me. Certainly don't be an asshole. And there's a lot of different ways you can be an asshole when you're giving feedback, not just being arrogant. <laughs> you know, you yeah. can also just rip someone down, have nothing nice to say about their work. And you know, I wouldn't do that. be very abrasive in the way that you give it, be very yeah. confrontational. Exactly. It's not, not no. necessary. It's constructive criticism and not showing, because you're there for them, as you've said, Shay. You're yeah. there for them. You're trying to give your knowledge that will help them with their story. I'm not going to talk about orbital, orbital dynamics if your story is about uh, vampires. And ultimately, no with this, ultimately, with this don't, no one can really prove that you're doing it or giving feedback with that intention of showing off, but you know when you're doing it. And so I'm just saying, think, keep it in mind for yourself. Be a courteous yeah. feedback giver. Be focused on the author. Really try, give feedback with the desire to help them, right. um, not just to prove them wrong. Right. right. It's That's really important because if you are serious about becoming a writer and you spend years in a writer's groups, you're going to read some real bad writing. Oh, yeah. It's important to be kind because you don't, you know, people are there because they want to get better. Mm -hmm. And if you're kind and you can convey to them effectively um, and help them for real, it is always better. So always, you know, always take people's feelings into consideration, but still be Amen. honest about it. Amen. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. That's a good read. We had some pretty good consensus on that one. I was happy mm -hmm. about that. All right. We're back to a do. 
So when you are receiving feedback, do ask people to expand or elaborate if you do not understand the feedback. What do you guys yeah, think? Absolutely. Um, I love doing that, but not, not just from not understanding. It's like, uh, if somebody says something, I, I may turn it over to the whole group sometimes and say, okay, so you're saying that this, uh, this whole motivation didn't work for you. All right. Uh, right. How about everybody else? Did it work for you guys? Yeah. Okay, it didn't. All right. Half of you say yes and half of you say no. Okay, I've got something to work on. Yeah. Um, right. And we have, we have someone in uh, the Saturday group that I've mentioned before, who's also in our hourlings group, uh, somebody, we call her S. Uh, and uh, S uh, is, uh, of course, a really good writer. She's starting to believe in herself. That's good. But anyway, sometimes she just says, hmm, that feedback, that's interesting. Everyone who agrees with that feedback, raise your hand and just takes a poll. Uh, and that's a really good way to get through that point and see if that point is, you know, salient or just mm. pay attention, but not maybe. Yes, yes and no. Um. Yeah. Because uh, ultimately, it's it's the author's story, and it's not up to a friggin' vote. Um, no, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, but the, the importance but. of that is, if everybody has the same issue in your entire exactly. writer's group with a story, not everyone may mention it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there is, they don't want to be kicking a, a dead horse over and over mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of times people say, I won't go over what everybody else has said because I agree with it. And right. you need to really listen when people uh, say that. Yeah, especially when, yeah. The, like, like Marty was saying, especially when the author is like, oh, that makes sense. Like, you know, yeah, I'll change that. <laughs> you know, if you're really trying to convince the author, I'm not really sure that's that, that's that helpful either if he's really no. stubborn about it. Um, but yeah, if the author has already said, yeah, I'll make that change, and, and you keep on hearing the same thing, that's such a time. Right. Story. No, you just move on at that point. Yeah, and um, I think that's a form of feedback from the author back to the people giving feedback. When you say, yeah. ooh, that makes sense, or yeah. ooh, ooh, that's a good idea. That would be better. Right. right. That's, you know, and let them, let them, credit, let, credit where credit's due. Let them know that you there's really like their advice. There's definitely times when I've said to them, okay, I get it. It's heard. What else? Right. <laughs> and, and, I, and I, you know, I, I can be a little snappy about it. But I guess no, well, yeah, please. And, but I will say this as, a, as an author, you do want to be quiet, but do not take that quiet to be totally silent. And that's why we have this do, because do ask questions if you're confused. Do ask questions if you want clarification. Do say, indeed, if, if that person is going off on a tangent that you don't think is going to be benevolent to you because that's eating into your time, say it politely. Don't be rude, but let them know. But I think I want to clear, uh, I want to add a, add a case to that. It's not just if it's unclear. It's also if I just want to dig a little deeper into, into the why right. you're right. feeling that way. Yep. Explore their brain a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some times where I've also, I mean, so yeah, so if someone keeps on hammering the same, same subject, that's one thing, but there's also been times where I've been in a writing group where, you know, I, I'm supposed to have 20 minutes and I get maybe like two people give like one sentence of feedback and then like, like, okay, who's next? And I say, well, wait, wait a second, wait a second. I need to talk about this more. I need to, you know, elicit more, more reactions. What other feedback do you have for me? And if you're quiet, why are you quiet? Did it just work that well for you? Or are you just not? sure what to say, like what are the reasons behind that being quiet, but I don't think there's anything wrong also with an author, you know, if you have 20, if you have an allotted time and you're not getting the feedback and the time that you were promised, I think it's okay to speak up and say, you know, I'm not ready to move on yet. I want to talk about this a little more. So that's maybe, maybe a hot topic. I don't know. Do you guys agree? <laughs> We never seem to have that problem. No, no. Exactly our always always got a problem. Yeah, our always always got something have that. had that problem. Never it would go that. long sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. But it's also fair at the end hit. of at the end of a critique for you to say, "Well, okay, I've got a couple of specific questions I want to ask you guys." Right. So mm -hmm. you can elicit that. Uh, I'll usually work them in, in in response to feedback, but yeah, you know, uh, it, yeah. it's possible to ask them at the end and and, and just sort of yeah. rather than doing turn by turn. Right. Um, right, kind of crowd control. Right. Sure. And I, I should point out that uh, writing groups can sometimes be moderated, sometimes be free form. Like Monday is more or less free form, Saturday is more or less free form. But the hourlings, we are moderated. And our moderator, um, who I will say is Evan, because he's a, a 
person that we do like and want to recognize his, his greatness. That was? Um, yeah, Evan do does leave at the end of the review, ask the author, do you have any questions? And that's really helpful. Yeah, for sure. Wiz doesn't moderate anymore? No, Liz, Liz doesn't really moderate. It's, it's Evan. Gotcha. I don't All think right. Liz ever moderated once we went to Zoom. Oh, yeah, okay. um, once we went to Zoom, it became Evan. We had a trusty hourglass that you used to, to determine the times. Well, that's now why, we just why we used my, the my Toastmasters app. My Toastmasters app to time everybody. A little uh, trivia for you. All right, moving on. We have one more don't and one more do. So uh, our final don't for feedback givers is don't give feedback that doesn't relate to the writing. I have had uh, one experience where I read a chapter out loud and I was waiting for my feedback from my, my fellow writing group members. And the first feedback that I got was someone saying that they didn't like the tone of voice that I read it in. And then other people harped on that and said, yeah, I agree. I didn't like the tone of voice either. It didn't, it didn't really match the character or the emotion. And I was like, excuse me, stop it. Hold, hold the horses here. I don't give a you know what about my tone of voice. <laughs> I'm here for the content. And so that was unacceptable to me. And I hope that you guys agree. And uh, I write that trip right away. But that's my don't for feedback if givers. If you practicing to be a, a narrator for your story, that would be one thing. But right. Otherwise. Yeah. It no, was, and, and, the weirdest thing. Our Monday group, the one that I run, we do it as a read aloud for the most part. And, uh, you know, you never critique the author in, in, in terms of how they did it. You may ask the author, hey, what was on the page isn't what you said, but I mean, beyond yeah. that, we're usually okay but to with say it. that the inflection in your voice was not... Yeah, no, that's, that's just wrong. It's the, yeah. uh, it isn't a, the critique isn't making you an actor. You're not an actor. I'm an actor, but you're not an actor. <laughs> Actually, trivia for you, most, most, author, most authors who do readings at conventions and stuff mm. um, will actually do a streamlined reading Yes, where they where where they trim it up a little bit to make it a little yeah. smoother for, for yeah places. Yep, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely true. Um, so I would. So agree what are some other things that you would critique? You know, um, I saw, hey Marty, I don't like you dress funny, man. Yeah, so no, review you your but, beard. Um, I've had people say they don't like the paper I printed it on because uh, I printed it on legal paper because that's all uh, I had one day. Like so I just I, maybe I'm just not experiencing the best feedback givers that are not the norm. So um, we had we had one where the reviewer basically said, "I don't understand why this was even submitted to this group." Quite frankly, I don't even think the writing warrants it. This is like a first draft of a first draft. <laughs> yeah, that's again a, a um, useless review. It made the recipient actually cry. In the group, yeah, I quit. Ultimately, that was a, a bunch of other things got the person kicked out of the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That, nice. that person, we so will not name. We'll just don't know don't who it is. Be an asshole. That goes back, exactly, yeah. Marty. I was That's just right. going to say that don't goes back to our, our flat. There you go. Flat advice for this whole episode. Don't be yeah. an asshole. Yeah, uh, and, and I will say, I mean, the just try to keep on topic. That's all we're saying here. Keep on topic. Also, don't give this stupid Kurt. I didn't like it. Useless. Right. Yeah. If you didn't like it, then either give us a reason why you didn't like it or just say, yeah. eh, pass. Yeah, I didn't like it is just as useless as, oh, it was wonderful. Right, exactly. Again, yeah, yeah. <laughs> useless. I didn't now, like it and I liked it are both bad. And there's calling out, like, I really liked how you, this line right here and saying that line was really cool, that's okay. Well, um, then there's also ways to portray, um, you know, a negative reaction. It's like uh, you could you could go clearly you haven't done any research into how chariots work because your um, you know your your scene in the Colosseum just didn't work, yeah. right? You know, no. or you could say uh, I've got some resources to help you exactly. uh, solidify that yes. uh, that chariot scene a bit more. Right. Yeah. Right? Sometimes yeah. it's in the presentation. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I totally agree. It's exactly. When one is helpful. And one is you're adult. Right. There's and tricks like saying, instead cool. of saying, this should, you say, I feel that. Or instead of, uh, you know, you must, it would be like, it would be nice if, you know, you can phrase things or, politely. Or your, your story would, might, or your story might benefit from, you know. Exactly. Like that. Or, yeah, instead of, right, you really got to. Wait scene to the next level if right. you try something like this. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yep. Mm -hmm. all, all good phrases, guys. Take notes. Take notes. These are good openers. 
Yeah, and I look, like Dave, David and I, we done Toastmasters, and you learn a lot about I that in the like teaching that you do for Toastmasters too. All right, you guys, ready for the final do? This is mm -hmm. the final do. So when you are receiving feedback, do be willing to take it because you solicited it. Um, if you're not willing to listen to any feedback and you just want to be told how wonderful it is, that's fine. But don't bring it to a writing group and, and waste mm. their time. Mm. Um, show it to your mom or your, mm. you know, your friends or get, a, you know, mm. get some fans and, and you can gush about it all day long. Right. But if you're going to seek feedback from a writing group, you have to be willing to consider it. Um, that doesn't mean you have to agree with it. Doesn't doesn't mean you even have to use it. You can discard it uh, if you disagree with it, but you do have the responsibility to at least consider it when you bring it to a writing group. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're not, why are you like like she said? Why are you wasting people's time? Right. Oh. Right. Right. You think it's ready for publication? Take it to, to some beta readers or, or give yeah. it to a copy editor. Right. Don't give it to a writing group. Right. And maybe you do think it's ready for publication, but you just have to be open to the idea that you could be wrong about that. You know, um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, I'll we, say we've I think actually had is. occasions where um, somebody will run an entire novel through the writers group, collect oh, um, a, a mountain of feedback from yeah. us. Mm -hmm. We will have spent hundreds of hours, yeah. hundreds mm -hmm. of man hours, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, reviewing and helping and uh, uh, doing it. I. You know, I like to buy the books of uh, people in the white writers group that um, have finally get to publication. Right. And if I read it and they didn't take any feedback at all to their yeah. own detriment, it's really disheartening and very disheartening. It is. It yeah. is. Because you are taking time, especially for these read, read, be, read pre read, uh, whatever you call them, read aheads groups like the sunday group that we do like yeah right and that's another don't you might have an addendum on here don't go for feedback in order to get praise yeah because there are some people that just want to be patted on the back and say oh your magnum opus is the most wonderful thing ever mm. um don't do that don't you know go out and look for people to tell you how wonderful you are because mm. it ain't gonna happen yeah, be willing to accept that you made a goof, that you made a mistake. And there now you've got these friends, and they are your friends, telling you that it could be better. Take that advice. And we're not saying Don't take that, all of it. Don't take all of it. And we're not you saying that praise we're not saying that praise can't feel good. Oh no. It's good. You know, Call praise is good to line. motivate you to continue, to tell you what you should retain. But there's also <laughs> excitement. In finding a solution to something that's not working, there's excitement yeah. there. So make it a positive. Make Absolutely. It all positive. And you can sandwich things. You can say like, "I really, uh, you know, liked this this joke here you had in your your writing," and you call out that line. And then you maybe give them some different difficult critique. And then you say, "By the way, I really like the ending. The ending was perfect." Um, you know, and that way it couches that critique and then maybe a. Uh, that may, be a, may have been a difficult critique and a nicer the, critique. The I always like to include in my sandwich. critiques mm -hmm. the things that I liked a lot. No, Don't just pick out nitpick the things oh, that no. are wrong in it. If they have don't. a great opening sentence, tell them they've got a great opening sentence. Absolutely. If the premise is really good, tell mm -hmm. them they've got a great premise. Um, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to go with only negative feedback. Positive right. feedback is 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 encouraging. I like to sandwich it. The coffee you know, sandwich. Really Thank kind you. of uh, soften them up with some good mm -hmm. feedback, yeah. give them the bad news, and then mm -hmm. send them home with uh, some more good feedback. Right. Uh, yeah. My sandwiches it's, usually are the ones with the with the uh, sauerkraut inside. If it's not such a, uh, if it's a medium critique, I usually can just give the critique. But if I really got to hit you hard, be worried if I'm going to give you a nice compliment first. Yep. Yep. Remember that, Jeffrey, when I read your novel. <laughs> I know, man. I'm going to hear that nice thing you said and then, oh, man. The compliment sandwich works. So you start with something good, mm -hmm. middle stuff that needs to be improved, end with something good. And the reason that works is because if you just go all negative, um, it, it's going to be really hard for that author to take anything um, from what you say because it's just going to be um, mm -hmm. a difficult experience for them. 
Um, and it's people who just listen more. They feel like you're, you're more engaged uh, with their story when you can find a little bit of both. Because there is, I guarantee there's a little bit of both um, in, in everyone's writing. You can find yeah. good in everything. And so, I, I just add that keep encouraging. You, so on we, well, okay. I, mean, I just add one quick thing. Is one that, more quick thing, you, go ahead. Oh yeah, one more good thing is that when you have your critique, you finish your critique, leave the place, do not say this is too hard. If it's making you freak out, calm down, put it aside, come to it later. You've had that advice. It'll be there for you when you're ready. I like it. I like it. All right, you guys, those are our do's and don'ts of feedback giving and receiving. We hope it helped you and be brave and keep improving your work. We're rooting for you. Absolutely. Another All right. We'll see you episode. next time.